Why bother remaking an anime if you're not going to outdo the original's quality? Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. As you may already know, I love me some retro anime. I grew up in the 90s, and so it wasn't uncommon to see plenty of classic shows, from Cowboy Bebop to Outlaw Star. One anime that became near and dear to me was called Sorceress Stabber Orphan, or just Orphan for short. The anime came out in 1998 and was based off a light novel. I have no idea how accurate to the novel the anime was, but for many, this was their entry to the series. Consider it a slightly more mature Slayers, if you've ever seen that, which you should. The premise is, of course, magic in a dark fantasy world. Our hero, Orphan, was once a young boy named Curlancelo, who studied magic at the Tower of Fang with his older sister figure, Azali. Disaster strikes when Azali toys with a black magic ritual that mutates her into a horrid dragon known as the Bloody August. The mages at the Tower of Fang see Azali as both a danger and a demerit on their reputation, so they continually seek her out and try to slay her. Curlancelo, however, wants to find a way to return Azali back to normal, and decides to leave the Tower of Fang, taking on the alias Orphan in order to stop them from killing her. While the original anime got a second season that felt a lot lazier and completely ignored the source material, the first season stands on its own as a tightly crafted fantasy adventure, with a satisfying resolution. Some episodes were handled better than others, but the core narrative was brilliantly executed. Shocked was I to learn that after over 20 years, this story would be told as a remake of the original anime and is now currently airing this season. I was optimistic about the project, but it seems that was a bit naive. This isn't the first time an age-old anime was resurrected. Orphan spiritual cousin, Slayers, returned to anime in the form of a sequel, Slayers Revolution R. It was… okay. While it was nice seeing the classic characters return for some more antics, it ironically failed to capture the same magic the original three seasons or OVA movies had. It had a kind of a weird art style, and the narrative started to feel like it was repeating series tropes. Nevertheless, it still managed to feel like Slayers, and maintained its awesome soundtrack and voice talents of Megumi Hayashibara in the original cast. Then, another of my childhood anime got remade. The series Soul Hunter, more accurately titled Hoshin Engi, aired just a few seasons ago, and I was looking forward to it. However, the first episode was enough to completely deter me. To be fair, Soul Hunter was no masterpiece, but it still drew me into its bright fantasy world, in no small part due to its gorgeous opening song. <laughs> This new adaptation tore that nostalgia apart, though. It went from a whimsical adventure theme to a track from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the guys who did the openings for Psycho Pass and Parasite. Their music definitely has its place in anime, but not here. Not in my Hoshinengi. The story seemed to be told in a completely different manner, too. It's quite possible this was to more accurately represent its source material, but that is no excuse for an anime to drop all of the basics of effective storytelling. I found myself wildly confused, unable to follow this new narrative pacing even with my knowledge of the original anime. I can't imagine anyone experiencing its world for the first time with this bizarre new anime having any clue what's going on. Even worse, it's not like this new anime looked any better. Its animation was pretty mid-tier, definitely rough and sloppy on a rushed TV budget. Needless to say, I dropped it. I feared the same would happen to Orphan's new remake, and sure enough, it suffered the same fate. Let's start with the art and animation. Needless to say, it's pretty stilted and cheap. None of the scenes felt like they had a thoughtful cinematographer, or someone who had a sense of cinematic storytelling. A huge part of that is lighting. Everything is brightly lit, with no creative use of shadow or color to establish mood. The opening was a major letdown, too. The song just had to be this upbeat rap track I'm not a fan of. But it was the animation itself that bothered me most. Pretty much all the Orphan openings feature Orphan running around killing ferocious monsters with a combination of martial arts and sorcery. 
The original series really stepped up its game to provide stunning visuals. Or is this new one is laughable by comparison? Seeing them back to back, I'm sure they speak for themselves. The first episode was a joke. They threw way too much in, to the point where every other scene introduced a whole slew of new characters, without taking the time to give you a reason why to care about any of them. It hits you on the head with the main concept right from the get-go, but does so without any emotional tact. The tragic transformation of Azali is absolutely essential to the series. It's what makes us feel for Orphan as he desperately tries to save her. In the original, we don't actually see this transformation until the seventh episode, but when we do, it's a real treat. Azali, alone in her room, is clearly in pain, pierced through with a sword. She tries to hold her pain back, and we don't even get a clear look of what's happening beyond her stark silhouette, contrasted by the blood-red light of the moon. Poor Crelancelo hears these cries and innocently opens the door, just as Azali begins to scream and contort into a filthy, mangled dragon. The dragon casts a shadow onto Crelancelo's face, which displays a look of both shock and fear. In comparison, the new anime seems to just be going through the motions. Like, oh, here she is, and there she goes turning into a dragon. The way these events are framed fail to communicate the intense emotions the characters are feeling as this happens. Hell, there's even some painting errors in Azali's hair. And just look at this sorry excuse for a dragon. It's about as plain looking as you can get. Compare that to the bloody August from the original, which is tattered and beaten. We get to see a real sense of anatomy and texture to her body. Filmmaking is an art. You don't just put the images on screen and call it a day. You have to frame those images, breathe life into them, and have a general vision for what you're trying to convey. While not the most extraordinary anime in the world, the 98 Orphan had that vision. The new one doesn't. It almost feels like a mockery. Again, for all I know, this new version is more truthful to the light novel. But as a work of visual media, I really couldn't care so long as it has to come at the cost of motivated storytelling and quality animation. Sure, while Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood felt pretty rushed for the first few episodes, in many ways, the animation from those early episodes was still a step up from the first FMA anime. So I personally don't have any confidence that Orphan's just suddenly gonna get better as the season goes on. It's a huge shame. Animation is a taxing process, and it's bad enough that animators are severely underpaid. It's no wonder that with the sheer volume of content being released each season, most anime lack polish or a sense of proper pacing. Given these circumstances, why bother pouring so much effort into a series if it's not gonna look good? This is especially true for a remake, one that currently has a much better version that's been around for two decades. Why even attempt a remake if you have no intention of surpassing the original? You know, like how KyoAni came out with the superior version of Kanon. Instead, it feels like all those poor animators are just wasting their time. If anything, it's got younger anime fans taking a look and thinking, oh, so this is Orphan. Which sucks because it has nowhere near the same appeal as the series that made Orphan recognizable to begin with. I really wish studios would pour their efforts into fewer anime created at a higher quality. So in short, don't bother watching this new Orphan unless you've already seen the original and are curious. Heck, even then, I'd recommend seeing the original again instead. If you're not sailing the high seas, you can find the anime available on High Dive, which is essentially where all of Sentai Filmworks' shows went. For like 30 bucks, you can own the series on Blu-ray from Sentai. Just be aware that this release is just a standard definition upscale and not actually HD. When it comes to remaking anime, what are your thoughts? Have you had any good or bad experiences with such remakes? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell as if it were your waifu. That way you'll never miss out on all of my anime content, lore videos, live streams, and Holy Waifu Wars polls. My vids are struggling to get featured, so that bell is absolutely critical. If you want to support me directly, check out my Patreon, or consider donating via Super Chat. And as always, celebrate your fandom!